Hi, I'm Randy Moss. This is your favorite Hall of Famer, Jerry Bailey. We're actually not on the road. We're standing in a studio, but we're on the road to the Kentucky Derby, technically. And Close today, enough. Yeah, and earlier today we brought you the Louisiana Derby. We're now going to kind of go over it with a fine-tooth comb from the fairgrounds. A mile and three-sixteenths. Jerry said these horses are so good, they can actually go around a light post after they leave the starting gate. Watch the one, Shopper's Revenge, right there. Steve Aspison told us the plan was to go to the early lead. Brad Cox told us the plan was to go to the early lead with the 11, Jace's Road. And Kings Barnes, number six, also has some early speed. We knew he'd be up close early as well. All right, so let's roll it and see what happens into the first turn because it was very eventful full run to the first turn. Watch how this horse is being ridden to the lead. Aggressively, the plan, obviously, for this horse, Kings Barnes, was to go to the lead. Chopper's revenge and his rider let him run early, but now he's throwing the anchor out. He's in his mouth. He's slowing him down, and they're going slow. So now he's just giving it to the front two horses, Kings Barn and Jace's Road. Also, that's disarm. Steve Asmussen right there in the, in the uh, Winchell Silks having to steady going into the first turn. He'll be mid-pack along the rail. Now going into the first turn appropriately, Florent Giroux on Jace's Road defers to Kings Barnes. There's no need to go head and head, so he sits right off his hip. He'd still have every chance in the world to run him down in the latter parts of the race, but they are crawling up front. They went the first three quarters in 114, which is pedestrian time. Yeah, I mean, you saw how aggressively they rode him out of the gate, Kings Barnes. Then, he, then Flavio Pratt was able to slow it down. 24.71 for the quarter, 49.60 for the half, 114.69 for three quarters. It's highway robbery when you let a good horse like that set that easy of a pace. So all these riders know they're going slow. They have to, but in the case of Disarm, he can't do anything about it. Jockey Joel Rosario is pinned in behind his stable mate, so he's just got to wait till things shake out, which won't happen until they turn for home because that's when King's Barn starts to spread the race out. Meanwhile, this was your favorite, instant coffee. A stretch runner, confirmed stretch runner, going around horses. But look how far back he is behind a slow pace. These horses up front are going to be relatively fresh when they turn for home because they haven't had to run very fast. Puts him at a big tactical disadvantage, although he did make a nice little run there. So as they straighten up for home, the long, one of the longest stretches in America, Disarm is back there with Joel Rosario, but in front of him, three links in front of him, Kings Barnes is kicking off, and he's just opening up because he was allowed to go so slow so early, he's full of run late. Nice rail trip late for Disarm to finish second, despite the fact he also was pretty far behind a slow pace. Very disappointing stretch run for instant coffee. He was wide at the top of the lane, but kind of flattened out there. He still got enough points to make it to the Derby. So, Kings Barnes going to the Derby. Runner up Disarm going to the Derby. Third place, Jace's Road, who was right there stalking the early pace. Don't know, but he's got the points to go if they want to get in. Yeah, and what's most impressive about Kings Barnes, this is only his third race. He's three for three now, stepping up each time he runs. This is our man cave. we got a big screen TV. We love it.